Nikon just released firmware updates for the Z810 and Z63 and I've installed it on my Z8 already and I'm just gonna run it through with you guys and see if it makes any difference. So starting out, one of the updates that is quite a nice one for myself that I'm going to definitely use is the shutter angle. And as you can see there on the indicator that usually would show shutter speed, um, like 1 over 60 or 1 over 120, your shutter speed. Now it only shows the shutter angle at a degrees. So you can actually go there and um, change the shutter angle. And this will then update your shutter speed as you change your frame rate. So that's quite a nice one. So let's say I'm... Uh, at 4k 30 frames per second now the shutter angle at 180 would mean that it is 1 over 60 shutter speed so this is the one that most people use and gives you that natural blur but then you can obviously change that and get it to whatever preference you have and by, by setting it to 180 degrees and then changing your frame rate so let's say if I go to 50 frames, 60, 100 or 120 it will automatically adjust your shutter speed to keep the same shutter angle so if you go up to let's say 120 in this case then your shutter angle or your shutter speed would go up to 1 over 240 or in this case I think the closest one is 1 over 250 so that's quite a nice addition to the firmware update. I think almost this is the one that I'm going to use the most. Next one is Iris Zoom in DX mode. So this is not something that I think many people would use. You have to be in Full HD and ProRes to actually use this function and then you can crop in at two times. So basically it's the same thing that we get when using 4K and the sensor cropping in from 8K on the sensor and you can still use a two times zoom without losing any detail according to them. Now this is also available in DX mode. So in DX mode you lose a 1.5 crop and then on Full HD 1080p you can still zoom in two times so this is something new that there wasn't previously so it's always nice to just have something new but yeah i don't think it's something that many people would use especially buying this camera i don't think many people shoot in full hd on a camera like this so yeah the next one is power high res zoom collaboration so this is specifically for the new um, nikkor 28 to 135 pz lens power high res zoom power zoom and high res zoom can be performed in a single operation available when a power zoom lens that supports this function is attached and on in selected for high res Zoom. On extend, the power zoom is used while the lens is zoomed out and switched to high res zoom when the lens is zoomed in. So basically, when you reach your maximum zoom on the lens, the high res zoom will take over to give you another two times zoom. On sync, the power zoom and high res zoom are performed simultaneously while the lens is zoomed in and out. So as you zoom, zoom in on the lens, the camera will also zoom in on the sensor. So yeah, uh, very nice, um, very nice feature this. I would really actually consider buying this lens just because of this feature. The only downside is that you have to be in ProRes and I prefer shooting in NRAW. It gives me more flexibility in post-production. It's a pity that they don't allow this um, to be used on NRAW, but at least it's there with ProRes RAW and it's quite a nice feature. Next one is a zebra pattern color customization and on this it's a bit difficult to show on screen but when you go into your zebra pattern you can now change the color so zebra pattern color and this is now in black you can now choose there was never an option to choose any color so you can now choose gray red green or blue in addition to black and so yeah this is quite a nice one um, i think you'd obviously be able to see a bit better if you are overexposing because most of the time when you are overexposing it's completely white in that region and showing it maybe in red or green sometimes the sky is blue so I wouldn't say blue would be a great color to use but red and green I think would be a very good way to see overexposure let me just see if I can actually get some overexposure for you guys going here so I set it to red now let me just set my ISO to very high and as you can see there, it is now turning red. And then if you change this to green, it will be green. And if you go to uh, blue, it will be blue. 
and then also gray. I would say personally that red or green would be the best ones. I think I'm gonna stick to the red for now and then see how it turns out and I'll maybe switch later on. Next thing that they updated, and, and by the way, this all these features are both for the Z8 and the Z63 updated. Customizable brightness for on-screen info. So this is also a nice one. It's not something that um, makes a huge difference, but it's definitely something nice that they included. Um, brightness info display. So if you go in here, I prefer the waveform. If you go in there, you can choose your size. So. If I'm going to turn this on, I would actually consider using the large. As you can see now, it's just this little small um, waveform here at the bottom. So if you turn it to large, um, it'll be quite a quite a big one right in the center of your screen. So it takes up quite a bit of space. But now the nice thing is that you can actually go and tra change the transparency on this. So I would say high transparency. And then it's not that distracting as it was previously. Let me just get my ISO a bit down here again so it looks a bit normal. So as you can see there, it is definitely not as distracting as it was previously. So I would definitely use the waveform on the large format with transparency turned all the way up to the maximum. So that's quite a, a really nice um, feature as well. So mostly small things in this update, but it's definitely life improvement things. The next one is shooting modes for photo and video. So I was a bit disappointed. I, I read this and I thought that it would now be the actual custom settings bank and the video shooting menu bank and the photo shooting menu bank. But it is not. So it is actually on the top here if you go to your mode and you select mode and then you change to P or S or A or M. This would now be independent of each other when you flick the switch to camera or video. So as you can see, let me just switch here to A and then as I switch back to video, it'll automatically go back to manual mode. So this is a, an improvement. It's not exactly what I was hoping for when I first saw it. I was hoping once you flick the switch that it would actually remember your custom shooting and custom settings banks and reload them back to where they were when you had camera or video mode on. It's an improvement, but it's not something huge. Then they obviously had some quite a bit of um, bug fixes and things that they included. So that's basically the biggest features of this update. It's definitely a nice one. I reached out to them on Instagram when they posted the video or the photos showing the update and asked them because the one thing that I'm waiting for is imaging cloud on the Z8. They haven't responded at the time of recording this video. So let's see if this would come. I can't imagine that they would leave out the Z8 from imaging cloud. It's such a high-end camera and it's not old. It's got the same processor if I'm informed correctly than, than the Z63 has and so yeah, I'm hoping that they would update at some point us and give us the feature to get on the imaging cloud. At the moment it's just the Z63 and the Z50 that they released uh, recently that's on the imaging cloud. But yeah, let's see um, and fingers crossed for another update. But yeah, that's it for now guys. I'll post the link down in the description to the firmware updates that you can click on and go directly to, to there. And also the instructions on how to do it is on their website. So click on update in the camera firmware and there's a nice layout of anything basically that you would need to know for updating. One thing that I can definitely just give you a tip of is you have to format the SD card in the camera before putting it in your computer and transferring it. I formatted it in the computer and it didn't work. Another tip that I can maybe tell you is that if you are like me and tinkering with your settings and wouldn't like to just lose everything, I would say definitely go to your settings and save load menu settings. So save your menu settings on SD card and use a different one or copy it to your computer and then put it back once you are done with the update. I would say definitely that saved me a lot of time now I don't have to do all my personal settings back. Anyways, thanks guys for watching and I'll keep you updated if I hear anything further or any other camera updates and things. If you are interested in something like that, definitely click subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.